Alrighty, folks, you know I'm feeling great on a Friday morning because we're now 5-0 and in our last five Major League Baseball tier package picks on my premium site. We had the Yankees yesterday, and they put up eight big runs against the Twins in a victory. And if you want to see which one of these free plays on this video that I actually like the best, I have another Major League Baseball tier package pick going off here today. You'll get access to that membership every single day for the next 30 days. As an added bonus, you'll also get access to all of my cheaper memberships absolutely free. They're going to be included with your purchase. Before we go ahead and move on, just want to take a quick time out and welcome you to my Major League Baseball free pick video here today for Friday, June 7th, 2024. Happy Friday to you. The uh, weekend is finally here. You made it. Congratulations. Of course, my name is Brock Page. I've been dishing out free sports picks on YouTube since 2016. Once again, if you want to see which one of these free plays on this video that I actually like the best, you're going to want to think about signing up for my Major League Baseball tier package pick. Of course, if you want to unlock all of my premium selections, you could also think about signing up for my full access, all-inclusive chairman package. Chairman members get access to every single premium selection of mine, every single package, every single day for the next 30 days. And as an added bonus, you also get access to my chairman podcast absolutely free. It's included with your purchase. Of course, if you don't need access to all of my premium plays, but maybe you're curious and you could use like one a day, well, you could also think about joining my $1.99 daily best play. It costs just six cents a day for 30 days of service. And real quick, I got to apologize about the fly that's been buzzing around the camera. I don't know if you've seen it or heard it or not, but uh, I just went, I, I work in my basement and I just uh, went outside. I saw a beautiful deer in the yard. So I went outside and was looking at it. And uh, surprisingly, it didn't run away from me. Um, so it was just a beautiful specimen. Of course, a uh, fly came in and followed me. So anyway, guys. I'm 7-3 in my last 10 daily best plays, 5-0 in my last 5 Major League Baseball tier package picks. I'm also 11-2 in my last 13 MLB tier package plays in that same package as well. And the good news is we've got plays going off in all of those memberships here today, and they're all included with your purchase of the uh, uh, chairman package. <laughs> yeah. Patreon.com slash Brock Page. Free content, Brewers, Tigers, 6.40 p.m. East. Uh, this game's currently off the board. Reese Olsen for Detroit, Freddie Peralta for Milwaukee. And uh, I tell you what, Freddie's continuing to, uh, you know, rack up the strikeouts this season. He's got 89 punch outs in just 67 plus innings. He's also got an ERA in the threes along with a stingy 1.05 whip. And I'll tell you, this Milwaukee lineup continues to pound the baseball. They're actually averaging more hits per contest than any other team except for one. William Contreras, he's hitting 313 and has the eighth most RBI in the big leagues. And of course, Christian Yelich, he hits 309 with an OPS in the 900s. And they're going to face a Detroit squad who refuses to win for Reese Olsen. The righty's just 1-6 on the season despite some really good outings. And I'll tell you what, the, uh, the Tigers have a losing record at Comerica Park. Of course, at the plate, they have a handful of guys who just aren't getting the job done. Javi Baez hits just 184, uh, a pathetic OPS in the 400s. That is just pitiful. And Spencer Torkelson, I, you know, I don't know why MLB Network has glazed this guy for the last two years. I know I get on them glazing Ellie De La Cruz. They glaze Torque as well. And, uh, yeah, Torque bomb, he hit a Torque bomb. Uh, Torkelson's been less than stellar over the past couple of seasons as well. He's actually hitting just 201 with the second most strikeouts on the team. Give me Milwaukee getting the job done for some money line cash. All right, next game, Twins Pirates, 6.40 p.m. East. Minnesota's minus a buck 20, total seven. Joe Ryan for the Twins, Mitch Keller for Pittsburgh. And as good as Keller's been, well, the Pirates continue to struggle at home. They're currently two games below 500 at PNC Park. 
But at the plate, this is a bottom five run producing team at home in the National League. Jack Sawinski bats just 182. He's got an OPS in the 500s. And Rowdy Telez, he's right at that Mendoza line with an OPS in the 500s as well. And they have to face Joe Ryan on the mound for Minnesota. Handful of wins on the year, ERA in the low threes. And I'll tell you what, strikeouts are definitely up for the righty. He's punched out 77 batters in 72 innings of work. He's got a whip of 1.01. And I'll tell you what, as much as Minnesota's struggled at the plate, they do a nice job of producing runs on the road. They're in the top five of the American League in runs per game while traveling. Royce Lewis made his return to the clubhouse this week, uh, four for seven already with three home runs. And Ryan Jeffers leads the organization in homers and runs batted in. Now injury-wise, Bart, Bay, and Williams are out for the box. Taylor's questionable. When it comes to the total, three out of Pittsburgh's last five at PNC Park got over the line. They're also eight and two to the over in their last ten at any location. Give me Minnesota minus a buck twenty over seven. Next game: Braves Nationals six forty five East. Atlanta's minus two dollars. Totals eight runs. Chris Sale for Atlanta. Jake Irvin for Washington. And uh, even though Irvin's thrown well this season. The Nats refused to win for him. The Reddy's just 3-5 and five on the year. And, of course, as a team, the Nats are playing their worst baseball at home. Out of 27 total contests in the nation's capital, the Nats currently have a win percentage of just 370. And they're facing Chris Sale here today, who's been excellent on the bump for Atlanta. The lefty's 8-1 with a .95 whip. Now, Sale's also struck out 82 batters in just 67-plus innings. And these Atlanta pitchers have thrown quite well on the road this year. They're actually leading the majors in strikeouts per nine while traveling. Give me the Braves minus one and a half over eight. Next game, Orioles Rays, 6.50 p.m. East. Baltimore's minus a buck 20, totals eight. Cole Irvin for Baltimore, Aaron Savali for Tampa Bay. And uh, Savali's having one heck of a crappy season. Out of 62 innings, he's recorded only two wins. He's actually just two and four in the year with an ERA in the fives. And even if Savali throws well here today, the uh, Rays are having a tough time getting on base. They're averaging under 7.4 hits a game at the trot. And they're going to face lefty Cole Irvin, who's been nothing but good for Baltimore. The lefty's five and two with an ERA of 284. And even if Cole blows chunks here today, he is backed by the highest run-producing team in the game. Gunnar Henderson's got the second-most homers in the big leagues. Ali Rutschman leads the lineup in hits. Now, injury-wise, Mateo's out. Hayes is questionable. Comes to the total. Three out of Tampa's last five home games did stay under the total. They also went 7-3 to the under in their last 10 gatherings with Baltimore. So if you're into historical trends, plenty of unders to go around. Give me the O's, minus 120, under 8. Next game, Dodgers-Yankees, 705 Eastern first pitch. The Dodgers are minus a buck and a quarter on the road here. Total is 9. Yoshi Yamamoto for Los Angeles. Cody Poteet for New York. And, of course, both pitchers coming into today's contest with some real solid numbers. And uh, actually, both bullpens with some pretty strong arms as well. Now, total-wise, four out of the Dodgers' last seven road games did stay under the number. They also went 70% to the under in their last 10 at any location. Of course, the Bombers on the other side, they saw all of their um, interleague home games stay under the total this year themselves. Give it the under nine. Next game, little divisional game here, Cubs-Reds, 7-10 p.m. East. Now, both teams are minus a buck ten, pretty much a coin flip right now. Totals nine. Nick Lodolo for Cincinnati, Justin Steele for Chicago. And uh, I've got to imagine Steele's, uh, you know, he's either been hurt or not 100% because uh, he's definitely looked uh, quite different from last year. As a matter of fact, out of 37 plus innings this season, the lefty's yet to record a win. He's actually got an ERA in the fours. Of course, at the plate, the Cubbies certainly have uh, their issues getting base runners. 
they're a bottom five hit producing team right now. And they have to face Nick Lodolo, who's 5-2 and two with an ERA in the low threes. Lodolo also has a sub-1 whip, a .99 whip. Of course, as a team, the Reds are starting to turn it on a little bit. They had a good week. They actually won their last five straight. They scored 42 total runs during that stretch. Ellie De La Cruz leads the lineup in homers and hits. Spencer Steer has got the most runs batted in. And even though the Reds have certainly struggled getting hits, uh, they've got little issue getting on base. They're actually walking more times a game at home than any other roster besides one. Now, three out of the Reds' last four at the Great American Ballpark stayed under the line. And out of eight Nick Lodolo starts this year, he undercashed in all of those contests except for two. Give me Cincy, minus a buck ten, under nine. Next matchup, Guardians, Marlins, 710 Eastern first pitch. Cleveland's minus a buck 30, totals eight. Logan Allen for Cleveland, Ryan Weathers for Miami. And as good as Weathers has pitched, well, the Marlins don't want to win for him. He's three and five on the year. And I'll tell you what, the reason for that, well, a couple of reasons. Sloppy bullpen, bad hitters. Miami's averaging fewer runs a game than any other roster in the National League. Tim Anderson bats just 188, OPS in the low 400s. Can't believe that uh, when the Marlins are playing, they still promote this guy on their promos because it's pathetic. He's horrible. And uh, Nick Fortes, he's hitting just a buck 77 with an OPS in the fours as well. <laughs> you know, the Guardians, Jose Ramirez and Stephen Kwan, they take on Tim Anderson and Jazz Chisholm. Like, those guys suck. They're terrible. Uh, anyway, uh, they're going to face Logan Allen here today, who's 6-3 and three on the year, and uh, certainly has a great lineup of hitters behind him. As a matter of fact, the Guardians are now the second highest run producing team in the majors, uh, only behind the Orioles at the moment. Jose Ramirez has 17 homers and the most RBI in baseball. And Stephen Kwan and David Fry, they're both hitting well into the 300s as well. Now, four out of the Guardians' last five on the road did get over the number. Uh, they're also 60% to the over in their last 10. The ball three out of Miami's last five at home got over the number themselves. Give me Cleveland, minus 130, over eight. Next game, Giants-Rangers, 805 Eastern first pitch. San Francisco's minus a buck 20, totals eight runs. Logan Webb for the Giants, Michael Lorenzen for Texas. And uh, Lorenzen's certainly looked good in Ranger Blue. He's got an ERA in the twos along with a solid 1.17 whip. Of course, these Ranger pitchers have uh, definitely been tough to hit against at Globe Life Field. They're allowing under 6.6 .6 hits per contest in their own building. And they're facing a struggling Giants team who lost six out of their last seven themselves. Mike Yastrzemski hits just 214 with an OPS in the 600s. Matt Chapman's got the most strikeouts in the lineup. And even though starting pitcher Logan Webb's uh, thrown some good innings, he does not have a winning record to show for it. As a matter of fact, the righty has a losing 4-5 and five record on the year. And out of nine total ball games against the American League, the Giants have lost all of those interleague games except for two. Now injury-wise, Ahmed, Wade, and Luciano are out for the Giants. We off for the Rangers, Corey Seager is questionable with a hammy. And when it comes to the total, four out of Texas, his last five in their own ballpark fell under the line. Uh, they also went eight and two to the under in their last 10 at any location. And out of 23 ball games against the National League, the under cashed in 70% of those contests. Give me the Rangers plus a dollar under eight. Next game, Red Sox, White Sox, 8-10 Eastern start time. Chicago, surprisingly, for whatever reason, minus a buck 20. Well, it's because of crochet. But anyway, Chicago's minus a buck 20, totals eight runs. Garrett Crow, uh, spit it out, Brock. All right, you got it. Spit it out. Yep, it's right there. Spit it out. Garrett Crochet for the White Sox. Yay. Good job, Brocky. Uh, Cooper Criswell for the Bo Sox. And I'll tell you what, Chriswell has looked good in 43-plus innings. 
He's got an ERA in the threes along with a 1.19 whip. And of course, at the plate, the Bow Sox love hitting away from Fenway. They're a top five hit producing lineup on the road in the American League. Connor Wong hits 327 at the plate. Rafi Devers has the most home runs. And even though Garrett Crochet has been a, um, a rare bright spot for the White Sox, Chicago continues to fall short for him. He's got a handful of losses on the year, and he does not have a winning record on the bump. Of course, it shouldn't come as much of a surprise that, you know, the worst team in baseball scores the fewest amount of runs. Now, injury-wise, Benatendi, Pham, Jimenez, and Fletcher all still out for the Chai Sox. Meanwhile, Gonzalez, Grissom, and Abreu inactive for Boston. When it comes to the total, the Red Sox went 60% to the under in their last 10 gatherings with Chicago. So if you're into historical trends, once again, uh, certainly want to think about that one there. Now, the uh, White Sox, they're seeing just about 60% of their contests at guaranteed rate field stay under the number themselves. It's right there. It's like 59 point, you know, whatever. So it's just about 60%. Uh, give me Boston plus a dollar under eight. All right, next game, Mariners, Royals, 810 Eastern start time. Seattle's minus a buck and a quarter, totals nine. Bryce Miller for the M's, Daniel Lynch for Kansas City. And uh, Lynch has definitely had, you know, several good showings. He's got a 150 ERA through a dozen innings of work. And the Royals do play their best in front of their own fans. They're 22-10 and 10 at Kauffman Stadium. And uh, they certainly ripped the cover off the baseball there. KC averages more hits a game at home than any other club in the league. Bobby Wood Jr. is hitting 317, sixth in the big leagues in RBI. And of course, Salvi Perez, he's hitting 309 at the plate himself. And even though starting pitcher Bryce Miller's looked good on the mound for Seattle this year, the Mariners just don't want to hit for him. He's got a handful of losses, and he does not have a winning record. And I'll tell you, that's mostly because of these Mariner hitters. They're striking out more times a game at the plate than any other roster in baseball. And out of 32 ball games away from Seattle, uh, the Mariners currently have a losing record on the road. Now, injury-wise, Jorge Polanco is still out for the, uh, for the Mariners. Mike Massey, inactive for KC. Seattle's last three straight on the road stayed under the number. They also went 8-2 and two to the under in their last 10 at any location. Give me the Royals, plus 105, under 9. Next game, Rockies Cardinals, 815 East. St. Louis is a buck 90, total 7.5. Lance Lynn for St. Louis, Austin Gomer for Colorado. And even though Gomer's thrown well this season, he's only got one win to show for it through 61-plus innings. Of course, on the road, the Rockies have been terrible away from, Den uh, away from Denver. They're a National League worst 9-23 in their travels. Montero hits just 209. Blackman's got an OPS in the 600s. And they got to face Lance Lynn, who's definitely thrown well this year, despite his record. The Reddy's got an ERA in the low threes. And out of St. Louis's last 10 gatherings with Colorado, they've hit Rocky pitching quite well. They've averaged over 5.4 runs a game during that time frame. Now, injury-wise, Contreras and Newtbar are still out. Bryant, Jones, Bouchard, and Beck. They are an active for Colorado. Give me the cards. Minus one and a half. Over seven and a hook. Next game, Astros, Angels, 938 East. Houston's a buck 65, totals eight. Frommer Valdez for Houston. Griffin Canning for Los Angeles. And uh, even though I don't really have many good things to say about Canning, well, the Angels are coming fresh off a three-game sweep of the Padres. You probably don't know that because who the hell's following the Angels right now? But uh, anyway, three-game sweep of the Pods, and their pitchers actually looked unhittable in that series. They allowed only five total runs through three games. And when it comes to cashing in on the run line, well, the Angels have been money at home recently. Out of their last seven ball games at Angel Stadium, they successfully covered the run line in all of those games except for one. 
They're taking on an Astros club who's got a losing record against the number in their road games. And speaking of those road trips, Houston certainly had a tough time scoring runs. They're in the bottom 10 in runs per contest away from home. Now, injury-wise, Bregman and Tucker are both questionable for Houston. Sano and Drury still an act for Los Angeles. Five out of the Angels' last nine ball games against the AL West got over the number. They also went 7-3 to the over in their last 10 gatherings with Houston. Give me the Angels plus one and a half over eight. All right, next game, D-backs, Padres, 940 p.m. East. San Diego's minus a buck and a quarter, total seven. Michael King for San Diego. Brandon Fott for Arizona. And uh, I'll tell you, Fott's been a strikeout machine this year. He's punched out 71 hitters and has a 1.08 whip. And out of the D-backs' last six ball games, they got the W in all of those contests except for one. They actually uh, put up a whole bunch of runs during that time frame. Alexander's hitting 300 on the dot. Walker's got the most runs batted in. And they're taking on a Padres team who lost 8 of 12 divisional home games. And the reason for that has been their bats. For some reason, they hit great on the road and terrible at home. San Diego's a bottom three run-producing team on their own diamond. Now, the 33 ball games at Petco Park this year, the Pods have a win percentage of just 393. Now, injury-wise, Machado is questionable for the Pods. Bogart's still out. Meanwhile, for Arizona, Perdomo and Thomas are still inactive. When it comes to the total, Arizona's 14 and 10 to the over against divisional opponents. Give me the D-backs, plus 105, over 7. And with that, folks, we're going to dive into our next and final matchup for the video. It's going to be in that Blue Jays athletics game. That'll be a 940 Eastern first pitch. Toronto's minus a buck 65, total seven. Chris Bassett for the Jays, Hogan's, uh, Hogan Harris for Oakland. And I'll tell you what, Hoagie's look good in a couple of appearances. He's got a 314 ERA, averages over a strikeout an inning. When it comes to cashing in on the run line, the A's covered in six out of their last ten. And they're facing a Toronto squad who definitely struggles at the dish. These guys are a bottom five run scoring team. K. Van Biggio, uh, he's right at that Mendoza line, uh, slugging percentage of just 291. And George Springer's hitting only 206 with an OPS in the low 600s. And even if the Jays put up a few runs. Starting pitcher Chris Bassett has certainly had his issues. The Reddies recorded six losses on the year as an ERA in the fours. Now, total-wise, seven out of Toronto's last 10 ball games did get over the number. Give me Oakland plus one and a half over seven. And with that, folks, we're going to jump into our quick pick recap. Give me the Brewers getting the job done for some money line cash. Twins minus a buck 20 over seven. I'm five and oh, my last five Major League Baseball tier package picks on my premium site. Atlanta Braves minus one and a half over eight runs. Baltimore minus 120 under eight. I like the under nine in the Dodgers Yankees game. Give me the Reds minus a buck 10 under nine runs. Guardians minus 130 over eight. Rangers plus a dollar, under eight runs. Red Sox plus a buck, under eight. Royals plus 105, under nine. Uh, Cardinals minus one and a half, over seven and a hook. Angels plus one and a half, over eight. Diamondbacks plus 105, over seven. And give me the A's plus one and a half, over seven runs. With that, folks, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on my premium site. Now, if you do end up getting a membership here today on patreon.com slash Brock Page, just a friendly reminder, you're going to get access to that membership every single day for the next 30 days. And as an added bonus, you're also going to get access to all of my cheaper memberships absolutely free. They're going to be included with your purchase. That's why I always tell folks that Chairman Package, it's a full access, all-inclusive membership. Gives you access to every single premium selection of mine, every single package, every single day for the next 30 days. And as an added bonus, you also get access to my chairman podcast 
absolutely free. It's included with your purchase. But most importantly, folks, got to thank you for joining me right here on the free video. Really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, folks, happy Friday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my premium site at patreon.com slash Brock Page.